Well, tonight, Colts Nation is still reeling after Josh McDaniels backed out of his commitment to become the team's next head coach. And you know, at this time yesterday, we were prepping for his big welcome news conference today. Well, now we're wondering what's next for the city and the Indianapolis Colts. And are we better off since it's clear he wasn't really committed to the job in the first place? Our Jason Spells is at the Colts Complex with more on how the team is trying to move forward. Jason. Good evening, John. A day after backing out of his deal with the Colts, New England Patriot offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels continues to deal with the fallout. We learned this afternoon that his agent, Bob Lamont, has fired him. Lamont not happy with the way he handled his business with the Indianapolis Colts. Keep in mind, Lamont also represents Colts general manager Chris Ballard. Ballard addressed the media this morning and I'm sure one of the strangest news conferences he's ever been a part of. Ballard shared what it was like the moment McDaniels bailed on the Colts and how he felt when he heard that news. I didn't want the explanation. Either you're in or you're out. It's not, it's not a, either you're in or out, 100% in or out. There was no persuasion. Let me make this clear. I want and we want as an organization a head coach that wants to be all in. We got work to do. I'm not I'm not once hid that. We have work to do. And I want somebody that's a hundred percent committed to partnering with us and getting that work done. Uh, Bob Kravitz, all in our broadcast today. Bob, we heard from Chris Ballard earlier today saying he wants a coach who wants to be in Indy. Who is that coach? My guy, based on who's left, would be Frank Reich, the uh, offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, played a big role in that upset victory over the Patriots in Super Bowl 40, or whatever it was. 52. 52. Last week, 52. Yeah, last week. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I think he's the one guy that the Colts could sell to their fan base, which is uh, really up in arms right now. Yeah, the fan base is reeling by this move, but if Frank Wright is indeed the guy, he is offensive coordinator. He helped build Nick Foles into a Super Bowl MVP. Oh, and he was a one-time Colts quarterback coach. You have much more coming up from the complex. For now, we'll send it back to you all in the studio. All right, thanks so much, guys. This story will continue to evolve over time. We yeah, so many, it. and so many questions tonight, like, when is it too late to change your mind like Josh McDaniels did? If you give someone your word, do you have to follow through? Yeah, our own Rich Nine today spoke with some businesses that bring people together to talk about what makes a commitment. And then as soon as I have that, I'll give you a call. Agile on professional staffing matches executives with job openings in central Indiana. In 12 years at the company, Angie Perry has learned not to celebrate until a contract is signed. If we have a verbal acceptance of an offer, a lot of times we won't even look at each other because we don't want to jinx it until that comes through in writing. It, because it can be an embarrassment if you're celebrating a, a huge, big placement you've worked on for six months and, you know, and then it doesn't come through. That's an embarrassment big time. An embarrassment like Josh McDaniels backing out on the Colts when a news conference was scheduled today to announce him as their new head coach. The analogy of him uh, leaving us at the altar is pretty much what happened, and I can't imagine what that would be like for a bride and a groom where the couple, you know, he was staying in there or she was staying in there and the other didn't show up. That would be awful, and that's what he did to us. Laura Pennington planned 22 weddings last year. She's never had a wedding canceled in over five years, but that would be a huge investment wasted. The jilted bride or groom or Colts might try to spin the humiliation. Maybe it wasn't the right one. You know, maybe you need to find somebody better. So, yeah, maybe we can just go out there and find somebody better, and then we'll have more of an opportunity to um, beat the Patriots. If they do back out of the position after they verbally accepted it, did you really want them to be at your company anyway? How long were they going to stay? I, I just I have a lot of issues with that, and I feel like there's a lot of heartache saved. Wow. Angie says her experience tells her that Josh McDaniels and his situation all came down to that Patriots late counteroffer. Yeah. And she said mm -hmm. that happens in business all the time with employees changing their minds yeah. or even going back to their company after they've started at a new company. Mm -hmm. And she says there's probably a succession plan in place, mm -hmm. and that's why Josh decided to stay in New England. Now, well, officially, there is no succession plan mm -hmm. in place, but maybe that's, you know, sort of a backdoor deal. And she believes that's probably 
what made this happen. Yeah. I like what right. Ballard said, though. Your first choice may not be the best choice or the right choice. So it's all good, right? It's a way of spinning it. That's what you say at the altar, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rich. We appreciate it. Well, tonight, whatever your feelings go, no one wants to cut to the chase better than WTHR.com's Bob Kravitz. And let's call him out this afternoon. He talks about Colts GM Chris Ballard taking the high road, but you could tell he really wanted to go low.